Hi folks, this is a continuation of the solar thermal tour in the solar energy series. I'll talk about some of the other parts of a solar thermal or solar hot water system, including one feature that's unique to this Anorwerk system. I'll start with the controller. There's usually some electronics in these systems that at a minimum monitor temperatures and turn the pump on and off. But these days they can get pretty fancy, providing alarms for things like pressure loss, temperature issues, and even provide control from a website. Enerworks also has some electronics monitoring and control, and um, that uh, there's one up also in the uh, kitchen as well, a remote one, so you don't have to come down here to monitor and control, you can do it from the kitchen as well. There are two temperature sensors in this system. One is inside one of the collectors in the roof. It's wedged between the copper pipe and the heat absorber, near where the fluid is at its hottest. The other one is in the basement, in the solar heated tank. Both of them are wired up to the controller that's also in the basement. The temperature sensor would be connected right in here near the hot output, just wedged in between copper pipe and the uh, absorber itself in the back. Another thing to point out is that temperature sensor wire that uh, came from the roof. It's actually this wire right here, which is just goes behind here and ends up being wired into this control unit right here. And uh, that's the temperature sensor for the roof, but of course we need a temperature sensor for this tank as well to see if we need any water. And that temperature sensor is right here, it's inside the tank. And uh, this is the wire going from it. And that wire just ends up as one of these red wires going into this unit as well. So it's all electronic electronically controlled. The way they're used is as follows. If the temperature in the tank is hot enough, then the pump doesn't run. If the temperature in the tank is not hot enough, then the temperature in the collector on the roof is checked. If that's not hot, then the pump doesn't run. But if the collector temperature is hot enough, then the pump is turned on to circulate the fluid. That brings heat from the collector down to the heat exchanger. From there, the process of thermal siphoning causes the water in the tank to become heated. At some point, the temperature sensor in the tank indicates that the water is hot enough, and the controller turns the pump off. If you don't remember how thermal siphoning works, have another look at the solar thermal tour video. The purpose of an expansion tank is to prevent the pressure from getting too high and bursting the pipes. Why would the pressure increase? Well, as fluid heats up, it expands, and with a limited amount of room to expand in, the pressure increases. How does an expansion tank work? Inside an expansion tank there are two chambers, separated by a flexible material called a bladder. One of the chambers contains the same fluid that's circulating, it's literally a part of the piping system. The other chamber contains air, which is under pressure. As the fluid pressure increases, that pushes on the bladder, making more room for more fluid. The pressure on both sides of the bladder actually stays the same, but the fluid on one side expands more than the air on the other side. Providing somewhere for the fluid to expand to means it doesn't have to burst the pipes or go out a pressure relief valve somewhere. There are three expansion tanks in this system. One is connected to the pipe with the hot fluid coming from the collectors. One is connected to the pipe with cold fluid returning to the collectors and the others connected to the pipe with city water. Notice that there are expansion tanks all over the place. This one says on the hot coming from the solar panels. There's another one right here as well. Uh, that's on the cold side. And there's another bigger one over here on the uh, city water as well. So those are expansion tanks. And just in case the pressure gets too high, then the, uh, those tanks will take off some of the pressure. This system has a flow meter installed on the pipe with cold water coming from the city. This basically has a little wheel in it. This wheel is in the path of the water, so if the water is flowing, then the wheel turns. Some electronics in the flow meter sees the wheel turning and passes that information onto the controller. That way the controller knows that the water is flowing. And as you saw in the solar thermal video tour, the only time water is flowing in the pipe coming from the city is when the tap is open somewhere in the house. What if you need to do some work on the solar thermal system? Replace a part, for example. Somehow you need to remove the solar system from the rest of the house plumbing while still having the plumbing function normally. That's what these three valves are for. Together they're referred to as the bypass valve assembly. Normally this valve is closed so that water can't flow through this pipe. Meanwhile these two valves are open so water can flow. But if you want to bypass the system then you open this valve and close the other two. Now the only way water can flow is here and clearly no water will go to the solar system. Meanwhile, you can still get city water whenever a tap is open, and the natural gas heater in this tank does all the heating. Also, if we look at the uh, carefully at the piping right here at the top of the tank, um, these valves right here are in case you want to isolate 
the, remove the solar system entirely from the system and use just the natural gas in case you want to do repairs or something. And uh, if we look at the arrangement of the valves right now, um, this is the cold from the city water which is currently open so that'll feed it to the tank. Um, this right here is the bypass which is currently closed. Right? If you've got a tank that's going this oriented this way and the valve is like that, the handles like that, that means you've closed that valve. And uh, this right here is the uh, hot water going out to the uh, natural gas tank and right now that's open because the handle is lined up with the pipe. But if we were to reverse that, if we were to turn this one this way, turn this one this way, and then turn this one in line with the pipe, in that case now the cold city water would just come in from this pipe behind here, go in through this one and out to the natural gas and this one and this would block all involvement of the water going down to this tank right here. Stagnation means the propylene glycol water mix is not being circulated because no hot water is being used. Why not? Because they're in vacation somewhere, so no one is using the water in the solar tank. Remember, if the water in the solar tank is hot enough, then the controller won't turn on the pump to circulate the fluid. Why do we care? Because if the sun is out, then the propylene glycol water mix will get hotter and hotter, and when that happens, the propylene glycol gradually breaks down and becomes acidic and damages the pipes. So somehow we have to prevent this from happening. The Enerwork system has a unique patented solution for this. In the back of the collector at one end is a vent. As the area where the copper pipes are inside the collector gets hotter and hotter, this vent automatically opens. Also in the back at the other end of the collector there is a plate with holes in it that's exposed to the outside air. Normally no air flows in because the vent on the other side is closed, but as that area heats up the vent opens and hot air escapes out the vent pulling in cooler air through the holes at the other end. This prevents the pipes and therefore the propylene glycol from overheating. Since that stagnation control method was Enerwork specific, I'll end this tour with a brief list of a few other methods. The simplest of course is to simply put a tarp over the collectors while you're on vacation. Another is to have a heat dump radiator at the highest point of the piping on the roof. And if you have a check valve somewhere in your system, then having a vacation bypass valve in parallel with it will allow thermal siphoning to happen at night. This sends heated fluid up to the roof to cool off. Lastly, instead of a vacation bypass valve, some control systems have a vacation overheat feature that can run the pipe at night to do the same thing. Well, that's it for the solar thermal tour of this Enerworks system. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my many other videos on my YouTube channel, RimStar.org, along with the Renewable Energy playlist. And that includes other videos in this solar energy series, like the first part of this solar thermal tour, as well as how nuclear fusion in the sun produces our solar energy, and a tour of an off-grid solar power system. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Bye for now.